What's up guys, welcome back. Today I wanna to talk about something a little bit different. It was one of the fears, one of the many fears that I had associated with my anxiety and it's the fear of being misdiagnosed. We're gonna talk about this, the stats, how you can lower your odds of being misdiagnosed and what you have to do to move past this fear because it's very, very important, especially for those of you that have health anxiety to move past this to recover, even though it's like a legit thing. We have to remove the fear of it. Um, and it's tough to do, it's hard. Recovery takes time, but we're gonna tackle that. But you know what time it is. Smash the like button down below if you're ready to kick anxiety in the butt. That's what we do here. So if you're new, subscribe, be a part of this family. You are welcome here and you are not alone. Remember that you're not alone. If you struggle with this fear, let me know down below in the comments. So. We're talking about misdiagnosis. I had a huge fear of this. I had anxiety disorders. I had pain disorder. I had health anxiety. So with health anxiety, I was a hypochondriac. So I self-diagnosed, obsessively Googled. Um, I thought I had a ton of different diseases. I would go from one disease to another. Started with cardiophobia. Then I went through a scare of throat cancer. I say scare. Uh, it was just me assuming that I had throat cancer. Uh, then moving on to, you know, the fear of lymphoma, colon cancer, brain cancer, all these different things with a ton of little ones in between. Um, it was really real to me. I felt like I was dying each and every day and anxiety was actually what was causing my symptoms. But in the beginning, guys, I couldn't wrap my mind around the fact that anxiety actually caused these symptoms, you know, on this level. And I'm going to the doctors and they're telling me that I'm fine and I feel the complete opposite. So they've gotta be missing something, right? And this is where the fear of being misdiagnosed starts, uh, or started for me. And if you have any type of anxiety, we've heard the stories, look, they're out there, you know, where such and such thought she was fine, she was told she was fine, or he was told he was fine, come to find out he had this, right? Misdiagnosis happens, uh, it's something that we can't dip and dodge, we have to process it, and except that it actually happens. Um, it's tough, okay? And I, I thought I was that smaller statistic and talking about and speaking about stats, um, you're gonna find a bunch of different stats on uh, you know, the percentage of people that receive a misdiagnosis. The one that I used was from DocPanel, um, which if you type in misdiagnosis percentage, it's gonna come up at the top. They say one in 20 people, which adults, we're not counting kids, are gonna get a misdiagnosis at some point, which is pretty alarming. So we're talking about 5%. Um, and I didn't know this statistic back whenever I was going through my anxiety. Um, I thought that the percentage was probably even lower than that. But I, with everything in me, I thought I was that <laughs> tiny, tiny percent. I know many of you are going through that. Like they gotta be misdiagnosing me. I cannot be feeling all these things um, and not have something legit wrong with me. Um, and it takes time, you know, even when you start doing the right things for your anxiety, for your symptoms to dissipate. So even in the beginning, when you start doing things that maybe I've told you or your therapist has told you, and you still have the symptoms, that fear grows even, even stronger. So 5%, that's a pretty significant number. Now I'm just gonna make some little adjustments to that, okay? I believe that probably most of those people don't have anxiety causing their symptoms, which means they're not triggered, they're not feeling some type of way emotionally and it translates to physical symptoms, right? They're not having anxiety, stress, negativity that's gonna cause the symptoms. They're having symptoms because something legit is going on in them, which means it's probably a more legit thing, right? Like, not saying that stress and anxiety is legit, but it's an actual physical thing that you can see and pick up on a test. Um, whereas I think a lot of people with anxiety the anxiety is what's causing it. The emotions, the negativity is causing it. So I would probably guess that probably a good chunk of that 5%, the main portion of that, are people that don't even have anxiety, okay? So there's that. Also, misdiagnosis kind of goes both ways. And some of these cases, they're told that they have something terrible or horrible, and it turns out that they don't have anything bad, right? Or uh, maybe they're told that they have like a tumor or something, it's cancerous, but it turns out to not be cancerous. So that takes up probably a decent portion of that 5% as well. So all I'm saying is if 5% is kind of accurate, then people with anxiety is probably actually a little bit lower than that. So it's still a slim chance, and that's what we're working with uh, when it comes to our anxiety. It is something that we can't ignore right so you eventually have to accept you have to make that choice 
for you. But kind of back to my story, it started with cardiophobia. Um, I had many different opinions, many different tests, and it still took me two and a half years to fully accept and embrace it. Um, and those of you with cardiophobia, you, you know how, you know how I felt. So cardiophobia, then I went through some other things and I would, you know, ask for testing, demand for testing. Anyways, I, I went on for like five years going through this. And I don't necessarily want you guys to have to go through five years of this, but I will say this. If you haven't been to a doctor, first of all, to get your reassurance, you need to go. If you're scared to go because you can't bear the news, um, that was something that I dealt with, so I get it. I'm not trying to be insensitive. It's a win-win. You either get treated for it or you find out that you don't have anything, okay? So if you haven't ever gotten the initial reassurance, what are you doing? You need to go. Make an appointment this week. Now, let's take it to the next level. How do you lower the odds of being misdiagnosed, okay? I'm not a doctor, not claiming to be one. Go see a professional, okay? But you need maybe two or three or four opinions, okay? So it does two things. It straight up lowers your chances of being misdiagnosed, okay? And also, it eases your fear of being misdiagnosed, right? It helps in both areas. So the fact that I was getting multiple opinions, it helped me come around. Now, it's my fault that I kept bouncing from disease scare to, di to disease scare right after another. I should have picked it up right and been like, okay, I have a history of this. I'm not going down this road. You know, if it gets super serious, maybe I'll get checked out. Um, I didn't catch on to that. So therefore, I, this pattern kept going. And that's part of recovery, realizing how irrational I am or you are and making a list of all these different diseases that you've thought you had, how your symptoms have changed, how they've never progressed to you going to the hospital. And then you gotta start making some decisions and start working on acceptance. Um, but that's what I would deal with. But if you haven't gotten a second opinion, please go do that, all right? Even a third opinion would probably be even better. And he, yes, it's, it's great, recovery's great. When do I stop getting reassurance, you know? Two and three visits or you know appointments, it's not crazy excessive, but it's also gonna make sure that you know what's going on with you and it's gonna help you with your anxiety, acceptance. Um, it's gonna help you move forward. And I think that's a good amount of re reassurance. If there's a specialist that you can see, go see a specialist. Um, you know, I, I feel pretty confident uh, when somebody's seen a specialist that they know what they're talking about. They're at the top of their game. They've seen tons of people. Also, write everything down because I think one of the things that plagued my mind was, oh, I hope I told him everything. Oh, dang it, I forgot to tell him that I had some tingling, you know, and that's just gonna keep playing with your mind, okay? So write everything down that you experience, everything that you're feeling, all your symptoms, all your sensations, so that you don't leave anything out, okay? That's gonna lower your chance for a misdiagnosis and it's gonna make you feel better leaving that appointment. And bring that to each doctor, okay? Um, if you feel like there's a test that you want, especially in the beginning in those first few visits or something, demand it. You know what I mean? Demand it. Get that reassurance. Also, guys, I wanted to add this in there because I see it time and time again. Get your vitamin levels checked, get your thyroid checked, and get your hormone levels checked, please. A lot of these symptoms can mimic anxiety symptoms. I've seen it time and time again through people that I've coached. Thyroid is probably the most common thing. The good news is that these things are usually treatable and you can reverse the effects or the symptoms that you had and you can get a lot better. These things can mimic the symptoms, they can lead to anxiety, or they can obviously aggravate your anxiety. So getting those things checked out and handled is very, very important. I'm actually gonna put those tests down below in the description so later on if you wanna get a test actually sent to your home, you can actually go through that process, find out your results online. So I'm gonna add that in there. Um, I didn't wanna leave that out. <laughs> when I finished the video, I was like, holy crap, I, gotta, I need to put that in. So those three things, guys, get them checked, okay? It's very, very important. But this is what I'm gonna talk about. Once you've done all that, and that's all good and great. This is the, this is where it's gray because I don't want to tell you to not do. You, this is a choice only you can make. I can't make it for you, and I can't tell you at 17 doctor appointments that's enough. You got to get out of here. Everybody's going to make their own decision, you know. And this is where it's tough with health anxiety. It's complicated. It's complex. You eventually will have to stop seeking the reassurance if you're going to overcome health anxiety. If that's all that you're dealing with, if your anxiety is what's causing you to have symptoms. If you want to fully get over it, you eventually have to get to a point to where you fully accept and embrace that it's anxiety causing your symptoms. And to do that, you do have to stop seeking out more and more opinions. So you see how it's very tedious? You see why recovery can take time? You know, 
and going back to making a few different appointments. Say you want four opinions on something. What if that drags out four months? That's four months that you have anxiety and you haven't been able to fully move on and do the things that you need because you don't really accept yet, right? You need like three or four opinions so it can drag out. That's time that you're not really being proactive, at least for most people with their anxiety because it's hard for me to really work on meditation or doing exercise or doing, so especially exercise if I'm suspicious that I have a heart problem, right? And exercise could be the thing that really gets me there. So, you know, it's like, you need the reassurance and you need a few opinions, but at the same time, eventually you have to cut off the reassurance. I can't tell you when to do that. I don't feel comfortable in telling you when to do that. I don't feel comfortable telling my coaching clients that. You just have to make a decision and come to terms with yourself. And you know you have to see where you're at. Am I ready to let go? Am I tired of this journey? How many people have I talked to? How many things have I thought that I've had in the past? You have to make that decision. But the bottom line is, guys, it's like I struggled. I struggled with this. And, you know, some other issues that I had uh, with this fear and what made it bigger, you know, made the fear a much bigger problem was that I would have symptoms whenever I didn't feel anxious. So I didn't know how anxiety worked. So I didn't know that the subconscious can still cause symptoms. I didn't know you could have anxiety symptoms when you're not consciously anxious. So this made me feel like I was getting misdiagnosed a lot. So if you have this fear, guys, uh, hopefully this kind of at least let you know that you're not alone. Um, I gave you some ideas on how to lower your chances of being misdiagnosed. It's already a slim chance, but you know if you can lower, lower them even more, then do it. So bottom line, seek multiple opinions. If you haven't gotten your reassurance, first of all, from a doctor, go. Um, if you've only talked to your primary care uh, doctor, you need another opinion because more experience, more opinion, uh, opinions are better. If there's a test that you want to have, demand it. Anything to speed up that reassurance part so eventually you can stop needing that reassurance. You know what I mean? Because eventually you will have to cut that off. Remember, write everything down when you go to these appointments. Make sure you don't leave anything out. That way you feel better when you leave that you left it all out there, right? <laughs> that you told them every detail. Um, and then guys, eventually like you have to start being proactive, working on your anxiety recovery, and eventually you have to let go of the external reassurance to develop the internal reassurance. And I'll probably talk about that more in another video. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, you know, I've mentioned coaching a few times. If you're interested in coaching with me, I love it. So freaking rewarding. I'm helping so many people with their anxiety recovery, their anxiety journey. Um, the info for that is down below in the description. Also, my anxiety course is changing a lot of people's lives as well. It's step by step on how I overcame anxiety. Um, the link will always be down below in the description and in the first pinned comment. Be a part of that. Again, if you've made it this far, let's see here. I want you to put down below in all caps in the comment section, anxiety recovery is possible. Anxiety recovery is possible. Be sure to join all my social media networks down below in the description. Online therapy, other resources are down there as well. Get the help that you deserve, guys. I love you all. Till next time, keep fighting.